breaking streets up where they walk up where they run up where they stay all day in the sun wandering free wish i could be part of that world <sighs> such a nice song isn't it did you hear that ariel sings wish i could be part of that world this is short for I wish I could be. We use this structure to communicate that we would like a situation to be different from what it is. For example, I wish I could be a bit taller because you know, I'm kind of a short person in real life. Oh yeah, hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Thiago, your real life fluency coach and let's learn English with the live action version of The Little Mermaid. By the way, in case you're new here, let me just explain very quickly how our method works. First, you'll watch the scenes with subtitles. Then, we'll teach you some of the most important vocabulary, grammar, and pronunciation from the clips. Finally, you will test your listening skills by watching the scenes again without subtitles. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell down below. Why, Thiago? Well, because every week we put out lessons like this to help you understand your favorite movies and TV series without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. So hit the subscribe button and bell down below in order not to miss a single new lesson. Now let's get started with the lesson. Ariel! Hey kid, how you doing? Don't mind me, I was just grabbing a snack. Scuttle, we found more treasure. Yeah, we went into the sunken ship and it was really creepy. Human stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, all right, let me see. Let, let, let me see. Any idea what this is? Oh, 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 oh! Wow. This. This is, yeah. This is very, very unusual. What? What is it? It's a, <clears throat> it's a dingle hopper. A dingle hopper? Yeah. Yeah, humans use these babies to style their hair. You just give it a little twirl, a little janky, you might get some pieces with it. And you're left with an artistically pleasing conflagration of hair that humans go nuts for. Really? I would love to see that. Can't, Flounder. You know it's true. Your father still won't let you go to the surface, huh? No, it's forbidden. He thinks all humans are barbarians. Oh, they're not so bad. Unless you're a coconut. They hate coconuts. Ariel! Hey, kid, how you doing? Don't mind me, I was just grabbing a snack. The phrase, don't mind me, is used to tell someone not to pay attention to you or your actions. It's a phrase you can use to sound more polite and even apologetic. It's like Scuttle is telling Ariel, pardon me, or excuse me. I was just grabbing a snack. To grab a snack is an idiom. This is an informal way to say to have something to eat. So Scuttle is saying the same as I was just eating something. Another common expression is grab a bite. Here's an example. Come on, hey. Uh, yeah. Ah, you did it again, Hunch. Let's go grab a bite. You know what I'm in the mood for? Could it be turkey? Scuttle, we found more treasure. Yeah, we went into the sunken ship and it was really creepy. Sunken is the past participle form of the verb sink. So we have sink, sank, sunk. Keep in mind that both sunk and sunken are correct, but sunk tends to be used more as a verb, while sunken tends to be used more as an adjective. The ship has sunk to the bottom of the sea. In this example, I'm using the word sunk as a verb. The sunken ship was discovered by divers. In this case, sunken is being used as an adjective. Yeah. We went into the sunken ship and it was really creepy. The word creepy means very scary. If something is creepy, it's, <laughs> you know, very scary. But if you call somebody creepy, oh, that's a creepy person there, a creepy guy, this is actually an insult. It's a person who acts in a weird, strange way that is bothering people, that is making people uncomfortable. Let's watch two clips from the classic The Lion King movie. And notice that in the first clip, Simba uses the word creepy with the first meaning, very scary. And in the second clip, an adult Simba uses the same word, but to refer to Rafiki as an insult, calling Rafiki a creepy little monkey. Whoa. Is 
It's really creepy, yeah. Isn't it great? Come on, will you cut it out? Can't cut it out. It'll go right back. <laughs> creepy little monkey. Will you stop following me? Human stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. Stuff is an informal way to say things. So things, stuff. I have a lot of things. I have a lot of stuff. But a common mistake that I see learners make sometimes is adding an extra S to the word, stuffs. Don't do that. Just say, I have a lot of stuff, or I have stuff. Any idea what this is? Oh, 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 oh! Wow, this, this is, yeah, this is very, very unusual. What, what is it? It's a, <clears throat> it's a dingle hopper. Dingle hopper. You know what? Let me ask my good friend ChatGPT here to see what it says. Chat, what's the meaning of dinglehopper? Certainly, the word dinglehopper is a made-up term from Disney's animated movie The Little Mermaid. In the film, a character named Scuttle, who is a seagull, calls a regular fork a dinglehopper. He humorously believes that humans use it as a hairbrush. This playful use of language adds humor to the story and highlights the character's lack of knowledge about human objects and habits. Hmm, interesting. So this word dinglehopper apparently was just a made up word or invented word for the movie, just to add more humor. Scuttle has no idea what the human world is, so he's just making up words or inventing words to explain these human objects to Ariel. Interesting, right? Chat, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Humans use these babies to style their hair. You just give it a little twirl, a little janky, might get some pieces with it. A twirl is a spin, like that. So to twirl means to make something turn or spin. Now, a yank is when you pull something with force. For example, imagine I grab my hair right now and I yank it. Yeah, I pull it, right? I pull my hair with force. I'm not gonna do that now, of course, because I'm not crazy, but ah! Or imagine something is connected with a cable and you yank the plug or the cable. You pull it using force. And you're left with an artistically pleasing conflagration of hair that humans go nuts for. Really? I would love to see that. The word conflagration refers to a large and destructive fire that spreads quickly and causes significant damage. Again, this word is being used to add humor to the movie. It shows that Scuttle doesn't even know how to properly use certain words. But since Ariel is innocent and ignorant about the human world, she believes everything Scuttle says. And you're left with an artistically pleasing conflagration of hair that humans go nuts for. Really? In this context, to go nuts for something means to be extremely impressed by something. But the phrase go nuts is usually used to say go crazy or act in an extremely exciting, uncontrolled way. If you tell someone, don't go nuts, you're saying, behave yourself, don't do anything crazy. Here's an example. All right, here is the cupcake recipe I got out of the internet. Sprinkles, sprinkles! And don't go nuts with the sprinkles! Your father still won't let you go to the surface, huh? Nice connected speech. Won't let you go to the... We hear, won't let you won't let you. So the T for won't is a stop consonant, won't, won't, and then won't let you. The T here for let also is pronounced as a stop consonant, let you, won't let you, go to the surface, go to the surface. So two is reduced to a da. so go to the surface, won't let you go to the surface. Your father still won't let you go to the surface, huh? Your father still won't let you go to the surface, huh? No, it's forbidden. He thinks all humans are barbarians. If something is forbidden, it is prohibited or not allowed. In history, the term barbarian refers to a person who is perceived as uncivilized and often violent by the standards of a certain culture. Ariel's father believes humans are barbarians. In other words, unsophisticated and dangerous people. They're the most dangerous species of all. You know, looking at me now, you might not think I'm very old, but actually, I started learning English many years ago, 
back at a time when we didn't have Google, Netflix, YouTube, apps, none of these things. It was really hard for me back then to find opportunities to practice my listening in English and also speak English with people. The great thing about living in today's age is that there are so many amazing resources for you to practice your English with. Take the Real Life English app, for example. This is an app that we specifically created to solve some of the biggest problems you have as an English learner. With the app, you can listen to our world-class podcast. You can improve your listening skills with relevant lessons presented by Ethan, myself, and other fluency coaches. You can also learn tons of words, phrasal verbs, and idioms with flashcards. The app uses cutting-edge technology that helps to memorize the words you learn much faster. And of course, never speak alone again. With the app, you can connect to another English learner anywhere in the world to have short conversations in real time. The app has a rating of 4.9 stars and tons of happy users. Check out this review. I discovered this app only 15 days ago and I'm using it daily and I love it because I find that's amazing and helpful. Thanks a lot. So if you want to go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker just like this user and tons of other users are doing, download the Real Life English app right now. I'm going to leave the link up here in the description of the video for you to download it. It's free for you to download and install it and once you do it, try the Fluency Challenge. Why? The Fluency Challenge is a series of mini lessons on the app that introduce you to all the cool features you can have access to with our app. And once you finish the Fluency Challenge, you get a special prize. That's right. Are you curious to find out what it is? So download the app right now for free, install it, and try it for yourself. Again, Link up here in the description of the video, or you can go to Google Play Store, Apple App Store, search for Real Life English and download the app from there. You're gonna love it, give it a try. Now let's get back to the lesson. I swear, they get a hold of one, they smash it to pieces, just like that. It's weird. And what's this? Aria! <gasps> swear I'm across the whole ocean looking for this shot. Aria, ow! Sebastian, sorry about that. Aria! What are you doing up there? Wasting your time with this no nothing bird that can't tell swimming from flying? Hey, I suppose you've completely forgotten tonight's the Carl Moon. Oh no. Oh yes, the gathering of King Triton's daughters, minus one. My father's gonna kill me. Sorry, Scuttle, gotta go. Yeah, yeah. All right, sweetie, me too, gotta get some air. Princess, we wouldn't want to be late for Daddy's gathering, now would we? I swear, they get a hold of one, they smash it to pieces, just like that. When you get a hold of something, you find it, or you get it. To get a hold of someone also means to communicate with someone, especially by phone. For example, I got a hold of a childhood friend last night, and we talked for hours. Another great common expression is get a hold of yourself. This means control yourself or control your emotions. Here's an example from Cars 2. Peter, you have to get a hold of yourself. You're making a scene. But I never leave go. Never. Go take care of yourself right now. I swear, they get a hold of one, they smash it to pieces, just like that. To smash means to break something into pieces. To be more emphatic, you can say to smash it to pieces, just like we see here in the clip. For example, she dropped her cup of coffee and washed it smash to pieces. Sorry about that. Ariel, what are you doing up there? Wasting your time with this no nothing bird that can't tell swimming from flying? Hey! A no nothing bird is a bird that knows nothing. This is a great example of a compound adjective. A compound adjective is two or three words that are used as one word to give a characteristic or quality to a noun. Other examples of compound adjectives are a top-of-the-line computer, a never-ending problem, an English-speaking country, a middle-aged man, and a 100-page novel. 
Wasting your time with this no nothing bird that can't tell swimming from flying. Hey, we have a great phrase here as well. Can't tell blah, blah, blah from blah, blah, blah. This is the same as can't see or understand the difference or can't tell the difference between blah, blah, blah and blah, blah, blah. For example, some people can't tell hard rock from heavy metal. In other words, some people don't know the difference between hard rock and heavy metal. The gathering of King Triton's daughters, minus one. My father's gonna kill me. A gathering is when a group of people meet. It's a meeting. Via the context, we can understand that the coral moon here is when all King Triton's daughters meet or gather to be with their father. Sorry, Scuttle, gotta go. Yeah, yeah. All right, sweetie. Me too. Gotta get some air. Gotta go, gotta get some air. So, gotta is a reduction for have got to. The full version here would be I have got to go and I have got to get some air. But you see, it's just too many, right? Too many words to speak. So, much easier to say gotta go, gotta get some air. Yes, hurry home, princess. We wouldn't want to be late for daddy's gathering, now would we? Here we have a great example of a tag question. Tag questions are short mini questions you ask at the end of a sentence, usually for confirmation. Keep in mind that when the sentence is negative, the tag question must be affirmative. On the other hand, when the sentence is affirmative, the tag question must be negative. For example, you don't come here often, do you? You work across the street, don't you? In the clip, Ursula, the main villain of the movie, is using the tag question here more in a sarcastic way. She says, we wouldn't want to be late for daddy's gathering now, would we? This is not really confirmation, but more sarcasm, all right? Now it's time for you to watch the scenes again without subtitles to practice your listening skills. Also, I prepared a few questions for you to remember some of the vocabulary we learned today. Are you ready? Let's do it. Hey, kid, how you doing? Don't mind me, I was just grabbing a snack. What is another way of saying grabbing a snack? Grabbing a food, grabbing a lunch, grabbing a bite. Scuttle, we found more treasure. Yeah, we went into the sunken ship and it was really creepy. The word creepy means very scary, but this word can also be used to insult someone. True or false? Human stuff. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, all right, let me see. Let, 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 let me see. Any idea what this is? Oh, 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 oh! Wow. This. This is, yeah. This is very, very unusual. What? What is it? It's a, <clears throat> it's a dingle hopper. A dingle hopper? Yeah, yeah. Humans use these babies to style their hair. You just give it a little twirl, a little janky, might get some pieces with it and you're left with an artistically pleasing conflagration of hair that humans go nuts for. Really? I would love to see that. Can't, Flounder. You know it's true. Your father still won't let you go to the surface, huh? No, it's forbidden. He thinks all humans are barbarians. Oh, they're not so bad. Unless you're a coconut. They hate coconuts. I swear, they get a hold of one, they smash it to pieces just like that. Choose the image that shows something being smashed. It's weird. And what's this? Ariel! Swimming up across a whole ocean looking for this shot. Ariel! Ow! Sebastian! Sorry about that! Ariel! What are you doing up there? Wasting your time with this no nothing bird that can't tell swimming from flying? Hey! Rewrite the following sentence using a compound adjective. This problem never ends. This is a never ending problem. I suppose you've completely forgotten tonight's the Carl Moon. Oh no. Oh yes. The gathering of King Triton's daughters. Minus one. My father's gonna kill me. Sorry, Scuttle, gotta go. Yeah, yeah. All right, sweetie. Me too. Gotta get some air.
princess. We wouldn't want to be late for daddy's gathering, now would we? Fill in the gaps with the correct type question. You don't have anything. You have nothing. You have something. You don't have anything, do you? You have nothing, do you? You have something, don't you? Great! Now it's time for the comment of the day. The comment of the day comes from the lesson Learn English with National Treasure. We published this lesson recently here on the channel. And this user says, I really like the Disney movies and all the lessons you upload. And I study your lessons without missing a single one. This has improved my English skills a lot. I would like to request one thing. Could you upload Elemental, the Disney movie? That movie is so good that I want you to upload it. I will be really happy if you post it. Thank you and love you all. Thank you so much for the wonderful comment and suggestion. We will definitely take it into consideration. But now I have a question for you guys. Do you have any English learning related questions? Any questions about English? Let me know here in the comment section below and I'll be happy to answer some of your questions next time. All right? Guys, great job. You rock. You've made it until the end of the lesson. Awesome. Don't forget to like this video, share this video with a friend who's also learning English, and of course, subscribe to the channel in case you're not a subscriber yet. And if you want to keep learning English while having a ton of fun, check out this next lesson. Now, when the declaration is on display, okay, it is surrounded by guards and video monitors and little families from Iowa and little kids on their eighth grade field trip. And beneath an inch of bulletproof glass is an army of sensors and heat monitors that will go off if someone gets too close with a high fever. Now, when it's not on display, it is lowered into a four foot thick, concrete, steel plated vault that happens to be equipped with a